So here's the deal. Big snowstorm on the Thursday before Christmas. It's now eight days later, what, December 28th or so. Christmas day was 60 degrees, um, poured rain, flooding and all that. So this is what is left from that 20 inch of the snow. It's all gone. All gone. So, uh, to the project at hand, the, uh, the 1988 uh, Moto4 225, you've seen it in a lot of videos. Um, it was getting harder and harder to start. Just crank, 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 crank. And I was tuning the carb, trying to adjust that. And ultimately it dawned on me, I really need to check the compression. So what I've done, it fit in the shed here, about an inch uh, on either side of the tires. Brought it in because it was cold and snowy. Wanted to work on it in here because my hunch is that I'm probably gonna have to do a new top end. So I've removed the plastics and I'll just walk you through here, but the front plastics, um, really they have a bolt, one bolt, two bolt, three, four, and the front plastics are loose. Sitting up on here, there's a plastic cowl kind of back in there that cowl take off the handlebar um, take off the controls lift that off and then there's two screws in here that hold that plastic cowl on take off the gas tank lid lift that cowl off then there's two screws that hold the gas tank one on this side one on this side rubber snap remove the fuel hose from the carb you can lift that tank off at that point you have access to all of this you really don't need to take the rear plastics off except that I wanted access to this bolt here for the exhaust because I needed to get these bolts out get the exhaust loose here uh, so what I'm gonna do now and I've already done this but I'm gonna do it again just to check again I hate to be wrong but uh, I'm going to crank it and test the compression key on here we go, compression testers in. Fifty. So uh, 48, 50 PSI. Somewhere right around there. Really low. It really, you know, a uh, hundred, more than a hundred is where I would like to see it. So the question is, where's the leak? But clearly. I don't have enough compression, so there's some work to do. So I've started soaking all the nuts and bolts here, like a PB blaster, so that they're ready to be loosened out. Um, I will have to get new bolts for the exhaust head. Those were rusted. I had to use a kind of an easy out set to get them out of the exhaust head. I'll probably have to use that again. The other tool that's really handy for this is an impact Phillips head. This is huge for getting the uh, bolts broken out. And this motor has a lot of Allen heads in it, five or six millimeter. So I put the, uh, the Allen wrench in there and I've got about a 14 inch breakout bar. So, uh, yeah. I think uh, we're going to have to get deeper into this. Boy, you know what I wonder? I wonder if when I get, I assume when I do, I assume it's not the valve, but once I get this jug off, I wonder if I'm just going to see just a, a smoked cylinder head. Hmm, all right. So I'm going to start loosening bolts around here, anticipating I'm going to take this this head off. Let's see if the uh, PB blaster has done its job here. There we go. Next one.
this chain down on the motor, so I'm gonna grab a zip tie and grab it now. I'm just gonna go right around. So that I have a chance of grabbing that chain if it slips down in there. I think a lot of these bolts have been out since 1988. Heads loose, just need that one bolt. See if we can just keep nudging it along here. off looking down the cylinder oh boy just a lot of oil everywhere oh, oil all over my floor too let me clean that up so continuing the visual inspection here Intake, exhaust valves, they look to be seating. They look to be seating just fine. Which was my hunch was that my my compression leak was not the valves. This all looks fine. We'll just set this in a place where it doesn't keep making a mess. The two uh, timing chain guides, one is attached to the lower part of the motor and the front one here will lift right out. So we'll put that with our pile. And for the head now, should just be these two bolts down here, but I am gonna have to take the front anyway of the high-low range control off to get at that. Let's see how much of a chore that's going to be. Pistons down. Seems to be a lot of play. I mean, I'm at the tail end of that piston there, but I guess there's more play than I would have thought. It's funny, I keep smelling burnt oil. There's interesting discoloration in here. You can see the walls. 30 years old, it's not all crazy worn. I don't feel grooves, but a lot of carbon build up. So, all right. I gotta rotate the motor so I can rotate the piston up to be able to take that off. Uh, I've got a wire coming out on this side, so I expect this is my stator side. So I'm gonna take this plastic cover off, hoping 
that I'll be able to, yeah, because that's for lining up top dead center. So I should be able to rotate the motor from underneath this cover. Tell you what, every bolt is a chore on this motor. Oh, we broke one. All right. Broke one off pretty flush around what would be the pull start wheel. Not going to hold out a lot of hope that we're going to get that guy out. I'm not really worried about it. So, here we go. Let's, uh, okay. Give this thing an inspection. Aha! Uh -huh. There's wear all around the sides of this. I see all kinds of signs of wear here. All the striation along the top. Uh, there we go. That front has been, oh, and you feel that is all chopped up, rubbing cylinder wall. Yeah. I'd say, without doing a leak down test, which I didn't do, that does not look like a good piston head there. So, I'm going to jam this rag around, because I do not want anything getting into the bottom of the motor. Because what we've got to do now, alright, there's a retaining ring in here. We've got to get out so we can push uh, the rod that holds the piston head out of there. So, a pair of needle nose pliers and some safety glasses. And let's see if this ring can play nice. There we go. That allows it to, this one's coming up nice. Okay. Piston head is off. Let me get a rag and wipe this down so we can see this a little better here. Yep. That piston head has been wearing because these rings can push in past the edge so the rings are so worn down that the ring goes further into the recess than the head so the head was rubbing on the wall and eventually that wrecked the compression so new top end for this guy